Calm down, Council members. <laughs> I'd like to uh, call to order the April 22nd study session of the Newport Beach City Council. May I have a roll call, please? The record will reflect that all members of council are present. With the exception Except, I'm of sorry, with the exception of Council Member Daigle, who has an excused absence. Public comments. A yellow sign-in card to assist in the preparation of the minutes. The completion of the card is not required in order to address the City Council. If the optional sign-in card has been completed, it should be placed in the box provided at the podium. The City Council of Newport Beach welcomes and encourages community participation. Public comments are invited on study session, closed session, and regular meeting agenda items. Speakers must limit comments to three minutes per person to three minutes per person to allow everyone to speak. Written comments are encouraged as well. The City Council has a discretion to extend or shorten the time limit on agenda or non-agenda items. As a courtesy, please turn cell phones off or set them in the silent mode. All right, I would like, to, before we get started, just like to mention to those in the audience that we have a large camera set up in the middle of the audience that's here to threaten everyone in the room. Uh, oh, I guess that's wrong. It's the architects that are here that wish to uh, uh, do some additional photography, so uh, don't let them bother you. And with that, uh, we'll go to a study session first item. Public comment? I got some wrong advice here. All right, Jim, tell us what to do. Uh, thank you, Mayor Hill and members of the council. My name is Jim Mosier. I'm not sure the microphone is working. I hope you can hear me. Uh, as a non-agenda comment, I wanted to talk to you for a moment about the city's master fee schedule. When you last looked at that in October, each line was numbered, so I can tell you with confidence that it specified 767 different fees that we charge for services the city provides. Like the records retention schedule that you were looking at and will be in a few minutes, these massive catch-all documents tend to become disorganized closets of city governance. And when one looks into those closets, the entries are rarely tidy or in some cases even rational. My reason for looking at the master fee schedule was that I heard that the city staff, without seeking your advice, as I've told you before, was renting out the old city council chamber on Newport Boulevard as a worship site for a newly emerging religious group on the peninsula. I have some general concerns about the relationship between church and state, but what I was trying to do was to determine if we as taxpayers were subsidizing the group, the growth of that particular group, by offering a place for their services at less than our cost, which is a kind of religious subsidy that is explicitly prohibited by the California Constitution. What I found is that for each room we rent, staff has proposed, and you have approved, seven different rates for different kinds of groups, even though your only policy directive in the cost recovery section of the municipal code calls for all rentals to recover 50% of the city's cost. As best I can tell, the finance department thinks that the recreation department established this multi-tiered structure, and the recreation department thinks either the finance department or you established it, and no one knows which of the many rates represents the 50% recovery or who decided what the city cost was. Moreover, a year after opening this new City Hall, one would assume the lines that invite rental of a city council chamber applies to this room, even though city staff believes those entries apply to the old abandoned city council chamber, and they think that this one, unlike the old one, is not available for rent. They've also been renting the new community room without any rate approved by you and are guessing you don't want to rent any of the many new smaller meeting rooms that we have in our spectacular new city hall. I have no idea if that is the direction that you want, but I think it would be a good subject for a future study session. Thank you. 
Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to comment at this point in time? If not, Mr. Mayor, can I just make a comment on this? Normally, I would Mayor. not rise to debate to speak to this matter, but one of the issues that we always grapple with with the peninsula is the proliferation of bars and of people uh, congregating in front of houses and smoking and all kinds of other things that denigrate the neighborhood and property values. And here we have uh, a group of people bringing a church and a youth uh, program to the peninsula that I just think is great, whether it's this church or other churches who do that. That helps enhance the quality of life in the peninsula for everybody who lives there, and particularly for young people. Uh, this is a building that has been abandoned, uh, for which they, by the way, power washed it on their own dime for free, uh, that would otherwise sit there and denigrate until the time that the Coastal Commission, in its own sweet time, gets around to approving the hotel that we're going to put on that site. So I think they're really doing a great service to help the neighborhood, to enhance the community uh, and, and the entire peninsula community. And uh, uh, I think your comments are entirely misplaced. I would just... I would just add to that, I care not one whit about the issue of whether we charge $25 an hour or $75 an hour or whatever it might be for the use of that facility. I completely endorse and agree with Council Member uh, Curry's comments. I would say my only concern is that we charge the same fees and we'd be consistent no matter what kind of a group it is. I would agree. Right. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to comment? If not, then we'll move on to clarification items on the consent calendar. Councilman Hen? I have none. Councilman Curry? I have none. Councilman Gardner? I have two. Uh, number six, the San Miguel Park. Uh, I notice we're replacing a lot of concrete and everything. Just hope staff will keep an eye out for opportunities to use more permeable surfaces and or to do the cutouts and things. For for our good water management practices. And then on number 14, the business report, on page 7, which is the expenses, all of the expenses that they were listed were a decrease until you get to the very bottom one. It says, and mine, it reads like 489%. Is that actually? That was the increase? 480 We spent almost five times as much? I don't have it in front of me, so let me ask uh, Dan to take a look All at right, that. I mean, I, I, I just, for some clarification at some point. Thank you. Councilman Petros? I have none. Councilman Selage? I have nothing. And I have nothing. We will now go to uh, the first item, second item on the uh, study session, landscape concept for Dover Drive. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. If you recall back in the uh, budget session last year, one of our projects was to rehabilitate uh, the Dover Drive uh, medians as part of our pavement replacement project. Um, we wanted to bring that back to you tonight at Council's request to review what we're planning on doing on the medians. Uh, so we'll go through that tonight. Before that, though, I asked uh, Mike Sinecoria, Assistant City Engineer, to be here and go through a little bit of the schedule on the Dover Drive sewer replacement that's going on right now to give the folks a little update, and that ties into our schedule. Uh, with that, Mike will be introducing um, our two consultants tonight who are working on the project, and they'll go through a brief PowerPoint for you, and then we'll take your questions. Mike? Good afternoon, Mayor, members of Council. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to talk about this sewer project uh, and, and the landscaping that's going to be following it. Um, actually, today was actually a, a, a good day. Uh, we spent about two hours with the Sanitation District staff going over this project schedule, and I do see a light at the end of the tunnel on this job for those that live near it. Um, just to, as a reminder, this project began, began back in July uh, up by the uh, Mariners Park. Uh, we did that with the idea that the school will be out of session and we're going to get in and get out while there's no children uh, in and around the large equipment. We then moved down to the highway and started encountering um, many issues, uh, utilities in the way, concrete, structures, just a very tough, tough environment there down on the highway working at night. Mike, uh, were a lot of these just unexpected? We didn't know that there were utilities there? Completely unexpected. Uh, w one of the concrete structures was just actually an abandoned old storm drain that was dead center of the, t of the sewer trench, and we had to move, move the line over. And, and, and as we moved up the hill, we, we found uh, just an enormous amount of groundwater that we, we just physically could not do the construction without moving um, the sewage and the groundwater out of the way, and that, that required a million-dollar worth of bypass pipe. And it slowed us down by about a couple couple months, maybe three months. Um, so we are behind a bit. Uh, the project was supposed to be finished here in July. Uh, it's probably going to be October 
maybe even in, into November. Uh, but we are moving better. I mean, that, that's the good news from today. We've made some very good progress this past week or two. Uh, we have Westcliff in sight. Uh, that is a very tough intersection. We are working with the sanitation district staff, uh, trying to trying to figure out exactly how we're going to get through that intersection and keep traffic flowing. There are road closures coming. I mean, it's, I'm not going to beat around the bush. That, that road will be closed for a period of time uh, in segments as we move up towards the park. Uh, Mike, if I could just interrupt. When he says we, too, this is an Orange County Sanitation District project. The million-dollar change order is on the district right now. We are helping. Mike's doing a fabulous job working with them to reduce their costs. And, but it's their project, just so the folks at home listening understand when we say we, it's the sand district. We, we are going to um, talk to the district about when they do have to close the road, about working some extended hours to get in and out like we did down here on MacArthur and the highway. Um, and, and they are receptive to that. There's cost impacts, but uh, they are making some good progress this week. I, I just want to th congratulate you on that project because I didn't get a single call. I mean, th the warnings and the notices were, were great, and I guess people just actually did it and didn't. I didn't see too many people backed up at Marguerite and everything. Terrific. Um, the, the team really did work well on that. I, my hat's off to the police department, too, that assisted that first day, um, and, and David's here, and, and that was just. Uh, very, very helpful, and we're very proud that that, that worked out as well as it did. Um, you know, I, I would just add, uh, on the peninsula, we've had to deal with a lot, you know, over the last uh, several months, but I'd have to also say you and your staff did a terrific job working with the Sand District and with the the businesses down in Balboa Village and, and so forth. That project, as disruptive as it is, was very well managed, um, so we appreciate that, too. Thank you. We, we, we in our Public Works Department, we do take time with the traffic folks and trying to really think through these jobs so we minimize the impacts. Dover's been a little bit tougher. Uh, we are, um, if the Sand District is willing and the Council is interested, we are going to invite the Sand District to come back for an update at some point when, um, when the Council is interested. Uh, there, is, there is some more pain coming. The Coast Highway Project is, is going to be here in July starting, and that is a two-year project, and, it's, and it will have some pain down there. Um, just in time to catch summer? Is it? Uh, we, we're not going to be impacting the traffic lanes in the summer. Uh, and it is uh, scheduled for Labor Day through Memorial Day for two years. And, it, and traffic will be flowing. We do have plans to keep traffic moving. The Sand District does it on the screen there. We do have a, a, a website and a phone number for folks at home. Or if you go back to the PowerPoint, that will be posted tomorrow. Um, we also have a map showing where we are uh, with, with the project. We're in the gold area now, and like we said, we're getting close to the Westcliff intersection. And then how we move from in the magenta up to Mariners and, and close the road, it will be done in segments, and it will be done to, in a minimal way to impact traffic flow, but there will be detours and, and, and cars moving in different directions to stay away from the construction activity. My, <clears throat> pardon me, Mike. You had mentioned that the, the segment of Dover uh, from Cliff to 16th is, is complete. Are, does that mean that their efforts are now finished and the condition of the highway is to their completed standards? The balance of the rehab is, is on us? C Councilman, yes, Councilman Petrus, if you recall, we have a, a, a council agreement with this project. They uh, contributed uh, over $600,000 towards the final restoration of that project. Um, so right behind this, and that's the presentation that will follow here, is that road restoration? We'll be changing the median curbs and resurfacing the road uh, sometime January. I want to steal right. the thunder of the. So they still next do have a responsibility to work with us. And, yeah, Good. that's correct. Correct. They've already given us the uh, the funds to do that that final capping on their trench line. Dan, I'll have I'll entertain any more questions on this, or we'll turn it over to uh, the consultant to do a presentation. Uh, we have Dave Grantham here from Civil Works and uh, Thomas Munoz from Nuvis. Uh, two of our consultants that were in the starting stages of this project. We also have Patrick Arsenega, our senior engineer, that's working with me on the project. Uh, Ree Marston's also here from Civil Works. Um, with that, if there are no more questions on the sewer work. Any more questions uh, of the uh, Dover project? We appreciate the community's patience on that, on that Mike, sewer Mike, when were you thinking tough. about inviting the Sand District back for an update? Actually, they have several things. And as you recall, about five months ago, they were here going through all their projects. They had one on Coast Highway, right. one up in Coast Mesa. We thought it would be nice to bring them back maybe June, July, and give you an update on this project will be further along and then start talking about Coast Highway, and they have another one up towards Coast Mesa that you might want to Good. That's an excellent idea, Dave. 
Thank you. David. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Thank you very much for your time. I am Dave Grantham with Civil Works. Mr. Tom Munoz from Nuvis is with me. Uh, we are consultants for the city uh, working on the Dover Drive West Cliff Street Rehabilitation Project. We are finishing up conceptual design at this point, and we would like to present our ideas to you at this time with the intent that you can provide any suggestions, recommendations, or directions that we can take into final design. That being said, here's the project. Dover Drive, PCH to Irvine, same section sanitation district's working in, and Westcliff from Dover to Irvine. We have several objectives in the project. Fixing the existing pavement, repairing sidewalk, driveways, updating curb ramps, um, installing striped bike lanes on Dover Drive in both directions for the entire segment, rehabbing the four city traffic signals, but also connecting the Cliff Drive signal, oh, oh sorry, yes, with um, PCH signal, which is Caltrans. Um, that's the only work we'll be doing to the Caltrans signal. Also going to be beautifying and installing landscape, uh, mainly along Dover Drive. Um, it's going to entail modifying the existing center medians, installing new medians, rehabbing the existing islands that are, that are at PCH and at Westcliff, and also replenishing any existing landscaping along the, the parkways and on Westcliff as needed. Uh, next few slides, I'm just going to walk you through the project limits um, starting on Dover. The photographs show existing conditions, and the text shows what we propose to do in those areas. So let's start on Dover Drive at PCH. Uh, there's an existing median island there. We'll be removing all the concrete and low shrubs, protecting the sign and mature trees, and putting in new meandering sidewalk and and a lot of new shrubs, colorful shrubs. As you work your way up Dover Drive, same thing. Uh, rehabbing that existing median, saving the pine trees, um, but putting in new shrubs as we move up. Uh, the, there is an existing median as you head towards Cliff Drive. That will be actually made wider. So we'll be installing new trees and landscaping there. Uh, as you head north of Cliff Drive, there isn't actually an existing median, so we'll be installing one. So landscaping work, median work, plus pavement rehab work as we, go, as we move up. Uh, as we move north of Cliff Drive, the focus is still pavement rehab and landscaping, but there's existing medians. Um, we'll be rehabbing the medians, making them a little bit wider, but all the existing mature trees we're going to work with and save those. So the low shrubs will come out, and mature planting will stay. Can I ask a question on the, the wider medians? Where are you getting the width in the roadbed from that? Where are you taking the, the... the... The medians will be widened maybe one to two feet, and the, 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 the travel lanes will be adjusted as necessary. So there's actually excess pavement out there. So when we looked at it, we wanted to make sure the bike lanes went in. And we looked to some of the lanes are 13, 14 foot. We could narrow those and actually add greenery to the median. And the okay. curbs are shot anyway. We figured let's go ahead and put that in while we're at it. So and the bike lane stays the same. Yes. And we're, we're going to come down to 12 foot travel lanes. Something yeah, and actually David's going to show you some slides coming up that show okay. the configuration of that. Thank you, Dave. Um, okay, so, and then the existing medians continue all the way to Westcliff, so the same focus there, redoing the medians, keeping the trees, and rehabbing the pavement. Uh, as you get north of Westcliff, the road narrows um, to one lane in each direction, so the focus in this section is going to be pavement rehab and curb and gutter repairs, sidewalk repairs. The street is not wide enough <laughs> to add medians, so we won't be doing that. Then you get from Mariners to Irvine. The park site is on the west side. Uh, again, the focus can only be pavement rehab in this, this area, but we also will be rehabbing um, the adjacent surface parking lot for the park. That's Dover, Westcliff. Westcliff, the focus here is pavement rehab and replenishing and refreshing the existing landscaping. 
We're not going to touch the medians, not make them wider, but we will be just filling any, any, in any plants or adding to them as, as necessary or warranted along the project limits. The existing island um, is currently turf. M well, majority of it is turf. We're going to keep the palm trees but remove all the turf and add a lot of uh, low height shrubs in that area. So I talked about adding medians um, on Dover. This slide and the next slide gives a comparison. The top half shows the existing landscape we have on Dover. The bottom shows what we propose to provide. So as you can see from PCH up to Castaway's 16th Street, there's a significant increase in the amount of landscaping we're proposing. And as you head to West Cliff, we're still adding more landscaping areas. So there'll be quite a significant change as you drive up and down this street. So we thought about how to lay out the landscaping and the medians. The idea will be to work around the existing mature trees as much as possible. Uh, we'll be grouping trees, three or four. Then we'll have shrubs or lower um, height plantings, then go back to groups of trees as you work your way up the street. And that happens all the way to Westcliff, the same type of layout. Now, we also have the opportunity to make a statement with, in landscaping with the two median islands at PCH, which is the top left, and Westcliff, the bottom right. Um, in these locations, like I said, keep the existing mature trees, but add, uh, I think, more uh, seasonal color to these areas with the shrubs. It can actually make a, a real focus of these areas with the landscaping. So throughout the season, you can have different colors, different textures going on. But you're not talking about annuals. You're talking about just things that blossom at different times. Uh, yes. So there is an existing theme in the area. Westcliff have, has a theme for landscaping, and Irvine has a theme. So we're kind of taking that cues from those areas and kind of blending it into Dover so all the three streets kind of mesh, um, tie together. So here's the ideas we're going to do. Um, as I said, keep the existing trees. We want to add some variable height planting so you just don't have tall trees, low shrubs. Removing concrete paving from median noses, which is kind of typical, and adding plant material. And also, under the existing pine trees, we're proposing to put some large boulders or rocks. Typically, plants have a tougher time growing under the pine trees, so we thought this would create a little more interest. You said that there's themes to these streets. I'm wondering what your interpretation of the Irvine Avenue theme is. That I will have to have Tom. But I, have a, I have a, an idea of it, and I hope that we can share that common theme. Well, I have a feeling you don't like the theme. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> No, we're taking portions of it that uh, we feel are, are, are good and the city maintenance and the city have felt that it's, it's good items and we're trying to pull them all together. My, my general thought is the Castaways Park is to the east mm -hmm. and that's an ecological mm -hmm. uh, area, native plants. It's a native uh, experience, very passive on the west side, we have a signature uh, learning facility, the Environmental Nature Center, where there's, you know, we're, we're trying to promote and, and showcase the natural uh, environments there. And I would hope that these medians, while we can retain the, the mature trees, has some expression of the natural setting mm -hmm. that Irvine Avenue has. Okay. We are proposing four, potentially four trees for the medians, so three new ones, uh, all varying height. California sycamore, um, I think the Costaways Park has sycamores in it, so we're tying from that. Um, the two, the Bird of Paradise and the Strawberry Tree, the city staff have uh, suggested those. They've been doing well in similar situations, so they seem to be doing well in median situations. Layout for the typical median, just to kind of give you a little more photograph as opposed to an exhibit. Intent is to really kind of combine different scales of plants so you're not just stuck with something really low, something really high. 
And here are the typical plants that we, we plan on using. Uh, again, these have been used currently in the city, city streets, city medians. They're doing well. Um, city staff uh, likes them. And they're also drought tolerant type plants, so it'll help with the irrigation demands. David, I might, might add that was a bird of paradise bush. bush. There's a difference between the bird of paradise and the bird of paradise bush that we've uh, had on Superior that uh, has been very successful. Uh, with that, I would uh, like to have any questions, comments, or direction we can take back into final design. Questions or comments from council? Uh, yeah. Was there, maybe this is more for public works uh, staff, was there any consideration given as to what the future access to lower castaways might be and uh, how this median, how these medians are going to work in the future? We actually did look at that. Um, the biggest thought was maybe a left turn in, and it, just because the media configuration there, the three triple lefts, there's just no way for us to put a median opening there. Uh, traffic is just not conjuned to that. So it'll be a right in, right out of uh, castaways that afford us the ability to do a better median job there. I actually do uh, like the concept um, and I was uh, pleased to see that you're going to be removing some of the concrete off the islands and plant that so that the, the islands will have a much better signature as you come into the area. Um, I, I, my, my biggest concern is that it's not something that disrupts the natural setting that's already there, but that blends in with it and that can sh showcase not only you know what nature provided, but what the city and the private uh, folks have provided at the ENC. Any further council comments? All right. We'll take it then that we're on the right track in developing this. Okay. I think, thank I think you. you've got thank nods you. across else? the board. No, we thank yeah, you. I, I, I think it looks excellent myself, and um, really happy to see that we're getting more on the program of removing a lot of this uh, stamped concrete in the medians and yes. putting this different kind of plant material. I think it's a progressive step. It has been. Thank you. Yes, would you like to make a comment? Oh, yeah, I agree with what you said. So thank right. you very much. <laughs> thank you. Those Smart man. <laughs> kind of comments we'd like to have. Is there anyone from the public that would like to comment on this item? Uh, thank you, Mayor Hill and members of the council. My name, again, is Jim Mosier. Uh, re regarding the first part of the presentation, we heard about the Orange County Sanitation District uh, Dover Drive project and the city's cooperation with them. I wanted to mention, since it's been going on six months now, at the intersection of Irvine Avenue and Highland, which I think in Costa Mesa is called 20th Street, uh, the Orange County Sanitation District has a one of these portable trailers with a electronic sign telling people that Dover Drive is closed during certain hours. That trailer is, is technically <laughs> on the Costa Mesa side of the street, but it is completely blocking the southbound bike lane, which is used not only by Costa Mesa children, but Newport Beach children on their way to the schools that we have in the Newport Heights area. It has been there for six months. It could quite easily be placed in the median where it would actually be more visible to the motorists than it is. It's kind of under a tree. Uh, I have seen people on bicycles veering out around that trailer, which they're forced to go out into the traffic lanes. And if we hear now that the project is going to be going on for another six months, I hope that with our cooperation with the Orange County Sanitation District, they could perhaps find a less obtrusive place to put that sign. As to the second part about the landscaping improvements, I perhaps am one of the few people who thought that replacing the historic windrow of eucalyptus trees that we had on Irvine Avenue with a rather sickly line of palm trees was not an improvement. At the time we were anticipating doing that, I seem to recall it was my suggestion that we consider extending the existing landscaping that we have on West Cliff with pine trees up along Irvine Avenue rather than introducing the palm trees. So I was very pleased in this presentation to see that the West Cliff and Dover pine trees are going to be retained 
and we're not trying to duplicate the row of sickly pine trees that we currently have at great expense on Irvine Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to comment on this item? Seeing none, then I think we'll close that and move on to the third item. Staff report, please. Ellie Lonnie Brown, the city clerk, is going to give this one, so I'll give her a moment to move to the other station there. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Hill and council members. Uh, regarding the records retention schedules, um, I'll be hi highlighting a brief, providing a brief history and discussing what, ha thank you, what hasn't changed, what is being proposed to change, and possibly, which is possibly the audio recording retention. So the records retention schedule was updated most recently in 2003, 2006, 2011, and hopefully now in 2014. And the reasons for the updates are due to the state law changes to incorporate better business practices, to include documents not previously included in the 2011 revision, and always to improve efficiencies. And schedules are governed by Government Code Section 34090 at SEC. As always, Council has a discretion to amend the schedule. The schedule was reviewed and approved by Council, and any additions um, or amendments, not deletions to the approved schedule, are only allowed with the approval of the city clerk and city manager. The additions or amendments are only to allow for records to fully be inventoried into the schedule and to provide the appropriate destruction timeline or to comply with the changes in state law that occur during each of the retention changes to ensure consistency with the schedule or council policies. And if you note in the attachment A to the staff report, a majority of the line items in the proposed schedule have not been changed, and the departments have reviewed the proposed changes. Council documents will forever remain permanent records, and these include the minutes, resolutions, ordinances, deeds, the meeting video streams, and the agenda packets that are imaged. And staff training will occur after council adopts the schedule. And the training will be conducted to clar clarify any staff confusion about maybe terminology, how to handle the documents appropriately, and how to comply with state law and, approve and the approved schedule. So some of the proposed changes include um, an updated timeline to meet state laws or better business practices. Items have been added that were previously not included in the schedule. Some department or division names have changed, so those have been amended. Um, we do not use Granicus any longer in order to have the voting, so that we could have one voting system and agenda management system. So I want to note that we are in the process of transferring those videos into the Novus system. And another proposed change is to allow for a one-time change to council policies, policy or policies in order to comply with any changes to the schedule. The request to change the policies is a one-time request in order to maintain consistency with the schedule. And I'm happy to also include a listing of these policies in the resolution that will adopt the records retention schedule. There has been some concerns about the audio recordings. Currently, they are kept for 30 days or until minutes are approved, so whichever is longer. And whichever is longer will allow time for the public to listen to the audio after the meeting, is, if desired. So audio recordings are covered by Government Code 54953.5b and Council Policy A11, which has been in effect since January 1994. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions and receive direction if there are any changes in the council uh, retention schedule. I have a couple of council questions. Member Hen. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, there's there's been some implication that staff has unilaterally changed our policy to reduce the amount of records that have been retained. 
I guess there was some sort of a change regarding these already audio recordings, but can you elaborate? I mean, the, the, my understanding is the policy was not changed, but that we discovered we were not executing the policy in, a, in accordance with the policy, and we did that. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Correct. The, um, there are some inconsistencies with our current council policy, which is the 30 days, so that so the retention schedule was amended to follow the policy and state law. So the schedule itself was amended, but it was to make it consistent with the policy? I, I believe so. I think that yeah. happened probably back in 2011 or 12. Okay. So the point being, nothing has changed since 2011. Correct. And the policy has been in place since 1994. Leilani, though, do you want to talk about the practice that uh, brought about the concern that Mr. Mosier and other, uh, has articulated that about what de individual departments? In individual departments were were not um, completely following the schedule. They were keeping some of their audio recordings online, and then when it was time to follow the records destruction schedule, they had to pull them off of the Internet. So that's where the concern came about, thinking that we were doing something different. In fact, when the audio was on the Internet, it probably wasn't um, following the policy itself or meaning the that, records retention. Meaning that they were on much longer than the policy Correct. called for. So nothing has been pulled off any earlier than what the policy or the law has called for. No. Yeah, and I think I think it's important to know that the policy didn't change. It was just how it was being implemented by the different departments. Any further? Uh, Council yeah, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, you said thirty days, but on page fourteen, it suggests it looks like you're suggesting a year. Um, the because because there is concern, you can make it to whatever limit you want. You don't. You probably don't want to make it permanent. Um, one year would be the longest we would ever recommend it. And we put that there because of the concerns that were going on with the audio recordings. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have any trouble. I think that's a good idea. We, I'd rather see us be a little more careful and just for, for that. So I, I would prove that. Um, I did have a couple of concerns um, taking out the individual personalities, just taking the positions that um, on page, on the second page where it talks about um, future changes, that a future amendments to the schedule be made with approval of the city clerk and city manager. Um, I wondered, one, if the city attorney should be involved, because sometimes there are probably legal aspects about that. But I'm also wondering whether when it comes to the things that the public is most concerned with, I mean, I don't think that, that most members of the public are going to get really uh, focused on how long finance keeps certain minutes or whatever. But they are very concerned about what we do in terms of our meetings and how we record those uh, from the commissions. Um, so I'm not sure that that's a great idea to have a city manager and the city clerk decide that they're going to change the record retention schedule for something like that. And I understand that. It, the reason we include, I included that in the res, or what would be in the resolution is if something were new – or a state law completely changed what we have in our records retention so we are no longer consistent with either state law or, or our policies, that would probably need to also be changed. Um, regarding items like that, we would, we would probably bring those back since we know they're a great concern. Well, I'd be interested in really looking at the, at the language and being sure that we feel very, very comfortable that we don't have suddenly a clashing um, city administration, which would never happen with us, but city administration, city council, and playing some games. I mean, and, oh, I some cities happen. That does happen. So um, I'll be looking carefully at, at that part of it, I think. So okay. bring it back. Councilmember Hen. Yeah, I think one way to address that issue is to make it clear in the language of the policy that staff does not have the authority to reduce the retention of records or eliminate the retention of records, that staff amendment authority is as to adding records or assuring compliance with state law changes. And in those events, there should be a requirement that they would, that council gets a receive and file. Staff made the following amendments just so that council has some, you know, currency about what's changing in the record retention. 
And then if any of us up here have a problem with it, we can always raise it as an agenda item at a later time. But at least that way... I'm happy we, to do that. Yeah, at least that way we keep abreast of changes. Is, is bringing back the items any changes or that we add or just anything in... I, I think any changes. I mean, okay. it's a simple matter to just write a short note for receive and file for council, be consent agenda item, unless somebody really sees something they want to talk about. Councilman Sellage. Yeah, I had originally had some concerns about the uh, audio recordings, um, retaining them for a longer period of time, maybe even up to, as we call it, forever, however long that is. Um, and I had some discussions with uh, Dave and Aaron on it, and, and they convinced me that, uh, that what the staff's proposing is really really the common sense way to do it. So um, I'm, 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 happy, I'm, I'm fine with the way that's being proposed. I'm still a bit unclear on the audio recordings. Are we, is staff proposing that they, for commissions and committee meetings, is staff proposing that they be kept for one year or that we keep it at the 30 days? I'm okay with taking a straw vote if, if, because it, state law does only require a minimum of 30 days. If we want to go longer, um, Council has that discretion, but I would need to know. Yeah, because I think one of the problems I see uh, with the 30 days is um, I go to a meeting and listen, and then I, can't, I don't go to the next meeting, so I, I don't see the minutes, and maybe I get busy, and then when I go back and look at the minutes, it's like, well, I don't remember that. I don't, that's not at all the way I remember it. I want to listen to the audio. Well, if I haven't gotten back within that short frame of time, I'm out of luck, whereas if we have it for a year... Um, that's just more than enough. If somebody can't get it act together in a year. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think a year is – I know personally for the committees that I chair, I like to put together an annual work plan for the committee. seems to me it's appropriate to have an annual amount of audio recordings, you know, just to cover the work plan year that the committee is working on. So, Lynn Curry? <clears throat> well, I think the primary purpose of the audio recording was to help whoever was going to do the written minutes do the written minutes accurately. So once they're done, uh, I, I will just say in eight years, I've never gone back and listened to a recording of a committee meeting. And, uh, you know, I, I question the, their value. But but I think you have, haven't you, Leilani? I, I've had a question that said, yeah, I didn't, that's not what I thought I said. And, and you've gone back and listened to, the, to the, the audio to pick it up, the exact language. I don't know if it was eight years, but maybe it was. No, no, I, I meant but being <laughs> but with yeah, uh, and so, yeah, so there are times when you do go back. Some people do. I guess to uh, Council and Leilani, it, j just so you're aware, we will not always audio tape every meeting. So there, and there's no requirement in here to audio tape them. For instance, we don't do that with the Aviation Committee. So I just take the minutes as I'm sitting there at the at the meeting itself. So these would be four audio four meetings where we do take an audio tape, and the recommendation is to go to one year uh, versus the 30 days and or until. So which ones do we do? Leilani might have to help me here. I just know the ones that I attend as to which are and which are not. Yeah, we have about 20 committees, so I don't know specifically which ones they are. I know a lot of the ones that come out of community development do um, audio tape and some of public works' committees, some of finances. Well, I, I noticed that at the Arts Commission and at the uh, Coastal Bay Tidelands committee with new name um, that whoever is taking the minutes usually has a recorder so that's not considered an official audio recording then yes that's just is. to help someone actually it, it is in this case okay it, it was if, if someone and, and that's a thing that I discussed with mr. Selich there is a lot of mechanical and human error in that it's a little recording device in someone's hand it may lose its batteries it may not they may not we may not start on time we may have to flip the tape if we're not using MP3. So to me, it's a very imprecise thing to store, but we want to be responsive to, to uh, what the council and the community wants to save. I think the minutes are the official transcripts of the meeting as adopted. Yeah, the issue, the issue here is that, though, just in my experience with the committees, that the taking of the minutes is a variable practice. Some minutes are very detailed and lengthy and you know, show discussion back and forth. Other minutes are more action-oriented. So in view of the variation in minute-taking style, I, I feel good about keeping it. And 
I, for one, don't mind if there's an 18-minute gap occasionally in our tapes. So. Any further council comments? Anyone from the audience, the public, that would like to speak on this item, please come forth. Mayor Hill and members of the City Council, my name is Jim Mosier. It is common for speakers at City Council meetings throughout California to hoist red flags by raising the specter of the City of Bell. I mention Bell only because it demonstrates the fundamental importance, if things go wrong, of retaining enough records to be able to piece together what went wrong, which I believe is why California law prohibits the destruction of the people's records without authorization from you, our elected stewards of the public trust. But in a good city, and I hope Newport Beach is a good city, the value of retaining complete and accurate records of the city's actions, acts, and aspirations goes far beyond that. Our current and retained records are the key to transparency, to an informed electorate, and to informed decision-making by you, the city council, by the many commissions and committees that work under or alongside you, and by the city staff itself. I cannot in three minutes provide any intelligent comment on the 170 pages of retention rules that you are reviewing this afternoon, other than to say how bizarre I think it is that we allow the schedule to be copyrighted by an outside private consultant so that the public who paid for it and whose records it refers to cannot care copy or carefully review it. I would, though, point out that the paid consultant says on page one that although the schedule says when documents can be destroyed, it does not actually in most cases authorize the destruction. Since state law requires you to do that authorizing, I would hope that as our elected stewards of the public trust, you would be asking how the authorization for the actual destruction happens in Newport Beach. The schedule does not explain that or why the manifest of records to be destroyed, going far beyond audio tapes, is no longer brought to you for public review and approval as it once was. I also have to question severely the efficiency of a city government if, as the staff report says, we are paying $100 per year for every 20 gigabytes of storage capacity we use. That should be a one-time cost, not an annual one, and the number quoted seems to be 100 or 200 times the going rate. Electronic storage is cheap, and it's ever getting cheaper. The challenge in this age of scanned digital and paperless records is not one of keeping records, but rather one of keeping them in a way such that the content is meaningfully and quickly available to the public, to you, and to the city staff. That apparently will be the subject of a different study session. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public like to comment on this item? Seeing none, then uh, staff, do you feel like you have direction? I do, thank you, council. All right. Then, um, Mr. Attorney, we're going to go into closed session. Do we have a closed door session today? Yes, the city council will adjourn to closed session to meet with Dave Kiff and Terry Cassidy, our labor negotiator, negotiators, uh, regarding negotiation with all represented employees. In that case, we will recess at this point in time, reconvene with our normal council meeting at 7 p.m. Thank you.